guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review and today we're going to be taking you to the movies. Well, sort of. We're going to be taking you to show you Shuffling Horror, the series. And of course there's multiple games with Shuffling Horror, the newest one being Innsmouth 32, which is a Lovecraftian Cthulian universe based game, but they have other ones too, which is they've got Pittsburgh and they've got Raw as well as well. But the, the newest one here is Innsmouth, which is what I'm going to be showing you guys, so explaining a little bit about each of the games, giving you a good overview as well as some unique and new aspects and then I'm going to give you my review of the series from what I got they're still doing certain rules for the Innsmouth 32 one but uh, I have a good grasp on this game I've actually had to play all three of them and basically the idea is you're going to be survivors of some type surviving in some universe depending on what it is whether it be zombies or aliens or Cthulhu and you're going to be trying to uh, escape of course there's also going to be a director who is playing the bad guys and he's trying to defeat your survivors. As survivors perish, you'll be gathering more of them up to the point where you're going to be the last one standing, or there could be a turning point because one player might turn into a bad guy as well. You have to complete four reels in this game, which are basically four rounds of cards, and they get progressively more and more difficult because more and more monsters start coming out. Equip your survivors, head into the deathly dimensions of the different games from Shuffling Horror, and survive if you can. Let's go ahead and show you down below what you're going to get with all the different games as well as a good in-depth idea of uh, Innsmouth and a couple other ones as well. So here we have Gamewick Games Innsmouth 32 with the Shuffling Horror series and as you can see there is a lot of interesting things that I'm going to be talking about in this game. Uh, I want to make a couple notes here. First of all this board comes with the game Roswell 51 and there's certain tokens that come with certain games so I only have certain pieces for the Innsmouth 32 game but I do have enough to show you guys how it plays and what it looks like and what it feels like and a couple different aspects aspects of the game that doesn't isn't included in the other games. Pittsburgh is a, basically a zombie game, which feels like you're in a zombie thriller movie with survivors, and then Shuffling Horror is an uh, Shuffling Horror Roswell is basically an alien style game which you're trying to avoid aliens abducting you. Innsmouth 32, however, is actually a bunch of gangsters go to the Mesozoic High School, the the, the Cthulian High School, right? The, the, uh, and basically these kids get kidnapped by these guys and they somehow end up uh, going into the void, right? And they're dealing with monsters and whatnot, so they're all working together. And uh, this is the basic setup for the game. It can play from 3 to 13 players, and every player is going to get a hero. They're going to have die they can use, and every hero is going to come with S points, which are called survivor points. There's going to be a deck of cards along with a reel. This is the discarded area, and this reel here is the first reel of the game. There's four reels total, and as this runs out along with the screen here, new reels will pop up. You're going to take three cards from the discard pile and place them face up here, and then you're going to go ahead and place 10 cards for the first reel right here. The next reel, I think, is like 20, then 15, and then 10 and your objective is to clear all the reels and all the screens. If you can do that, you win. However, the director is also playing as a bad guy and he is going to be playing as the uh, Cthulian monsters. And basically, as uh, when these guys get put out, the director is going to have to choose one and place it over here. And uh, then he's going to have his three here set up. You've got the deck of survivors here. And I think there's a total of 12 or so survivors. The card underneath the deck is going to be the turning point. And finally, the last one standing because there's other game ending conditions for this one specifically, which is going to be A, if everyone else is gone and there's only one guy left, he's going to attempt, he or she is going to attempt to uh, save the universe all on their own lo lonesome, which will be very difficult. And then the turning point is if somebody uh, if, if enough bad guys equate to the number of good guys, then the turning point's going to end the reel, uh, basically allow the last three cards to be utilized, and you can see who wins that way. But in general, players are just going to try and go through all of these and get through all these reels here. You've got a fade in and a fade out, and basically when the reel ends, somebody's going to fade out based on their turn, and somebody will fade in after the reel is finished, completed. And uh, then you've also got the S points. you got one and four over here, as well as there's certain tokens for certain games. Um, and of course there's additional stuff as well like there's a shuffler for an advanced play and then you got some other unique characters here along with some extra artwork for this game here I don't know what these are necessarily for I think they're just artwork to show you what else is coming in because I don't think I have everything for it and the game also comes with a ton and I mean a ton of player references to give you an example of how it all works it's all fairly simple and it's all explained really well on these reference cards but just in case you get hung up on one little thing you can go ahead and check these cards as opposed to the rules and that's
that's pretty much what you get in the game. Each player can play on one of these little circles here, and they'll place their characters underneath the circles, but be, to save space, I'll just place them above here. And uh, that's the idea of it. Let's go ahead and look down below. I'll show you how a round or so works of the game, and then I'll talk about some of the other stuff coming up, along with the unique stuff that is included in Innsmouth 32 for the Shuffling Horror series. So we went ahead and set up the game for four players, three actual character players and one director. And as you can see, there's actually a story involved with this game and you can kind of tell a story while playing the game. So in this case, you've got the goon who's kidnapped the art student and the aged scholar, and they're in some sort of library. How can you tell? Well, there's a weird medallion and a ne ne necronomicon, along with five decrepit cultists that are in the library. So this is what's on the screen currently and what they ha our heroes have to deal with. We've got our 10 cards for for the real here. And then we've got uh, the bad guy that is over here with the directors. These are the guys that are gonna be attacking most of the time. This is the discard pile. We won't be using that all that much just yet. But the start of the movie, and it shows you on this card here, depending on the number of players, how many S points each survivor gets. And each player begins with power S points by set number of players. So it's exactly what I said. And then it says opening scene, the game start, deal three cards for each opening scene. We've done that in the start of each reel, deal the number of uh, cards set by the real token. Okay, so we've got our one real token here. This will also indicate whenever it says real uh, number sign or pound sign, that is the number of that card. So if it says real number S points, that would be one S point. Maybe two for the next one, three, and then finally four. We've got our real ones that we're ready to go. So what's going to happen now that it's all set up is players are going to go in order and they'll be doing either a spotlight action or they will be doing a multi action. A spotlight action, there's two, two choices here. You can either take a card from the screen and then act with the person who took the card, or you can take a character and act with that character. And it's pretty simple. I'll draw one of these guys here. That would be this player's turn. He gets that character. He also gets the amount of S points equal to the character uh, based on the amount of players. And then this player will be able to act. And acting generally involves attacking. And the way it works is pretty simple. You'll be able to take uh, the character. You'll have his muscle. You'll try and roll two die and get under that number there. If you can do so, you're successful. If you go over, that's no good. So in this case, it's no good. And in fact, going too far over is not very good either. You want to actually go under the number here with a two die. If that happened, you'd be able to roll die again and attack the monsters and do damage to them based on the number of die you do damage to. But in any case, that would be one of the actions. And of course, the other one is just simply taking one of these cards here. You could choose to take a weird medallion, which is going to give you uh, minus three mon to monster saves. Uh, monsters get minus three saves to you. And they also gives you a brains bonus, it looks like. Uh, this one here is a power play. It's a Necronomicon. A survivor can take this and they can gain two times... Uh, the, the real number of Mythos tokens. And Mythos tokens, which I'll explain a little bit more later, but those things will allow you to banish monsters. Super cool. And then, of course, we have to deal with monsters here as well as over here. So that would be one option as far as the spotlight action, the two actions as well as the spotlight. Other options would be the multiple actions. In which case, if this player only had one survivor, maybe not so good, but if he had two, he could choose each survivor to take one of the actions below, whether it be attack, simply attacking a screen monster or a throng monster in each of these spaces are called throngs. He could take an item or power play card from the screen. You could do a mythos check by testing your brain. So he had four brains, he would try and roll. And if he succeeded, he would gain real number based on the um, mythos. So in this case, it'd be one mythos for succeeding that brains check. You could search by drawing two cards from the discard pile and keep any items, power plays, or popcorn cards. And then finally, rest. He can simply just gain two additional S point cards for each character that he chooses to rest with. So the more characters you have the more likely you want to use multiple actions so that would be another those are the two different action types and then you can choose between one of these two spotlight actions or having each player do one of these actions each after this player would do that this player would also choose to do that and then finally this player as well then it would go to the director's turn and the director where are you director so I can show you, uh, not you, at this point, here it is. This is the director's turn. And it says, on their turn, the director performs one of the following actions. He can take an attack, so he can take a zombie or, or a Cthulian monster or an alien and place it in one of these throngs here. And then he can attack with that monster, rolling the die, trying to get under the number, and then rolling a D6 to determine damage to one of the survivors. He can also do an all-out attack, which is a multi-attack with the monsters in his throng. And then he can do a cover plus attack. So you can cover a space, as I've 
strong with a monster, basically making it a double monster, an even stronger monster, and then rolling like that. And a lot of times it's a good idea to cover and attack. If the Doctor can't perform any of these actions, they are then able to draw four discards, uh, four cards from the discard pile, and place monster cards found into throngs, which is very, very useful. And that's basically it. After that, it would go back to the player's turn, and they would continue. Now, what's also interesting is, like I said, when monsters get defeated or placed in certain areas, these cards are going to pop up. And there's stuff like Shuffling Horrors, there's different actions, there's going to be Power Play cards. And whenever these pop up, Shuffling Horror cards, you're going to do whatever it says. It'll say, roll two dice, results are independent, um, ones are ignored. And then it tells you what happens based on monsters in play and all that good stuff. And then this would go away as well. A new card would pop out. Ooh, a high priestess immunity for to overkill, and it's good for rule, re reels one through three. Very, very powerful. Another thing to note, which is kind of interesting as well, is there's sanctuaries, and when these guys pop up, so maybe if somebody took the Necronomicon and used it in some way, or equipped it to themselves, because you can equip items like these shields, you can then put these sanctuaries down. And they're going to have a mythos value as well as a defense. The director can actually use his monsters to attack this area here. And players can use their move action to move onto spaces like these to gather more mythos and whatnot. It's a good way to keep your character safe from the director and his evil shenanigans. Uh, there's another interesting thing as well. So let's say that everybody took these items and they have them placed next to their characters. And these, these items will help you in some way, shape, or form. They tell you how they function. But if you had something like this, that's called a creature feature. When that happens, the director gets to take one of these guys and place it over here, and then a new one pops out. <gasps> another creature feature! Uh-oh. Now it's getting scarier. And it can keep going like that until eventually something happens. Oh, shuffling horror card. You're going to perform this random action based on what it says, and then flip another one of these over. That is a ghost schooner. Oh, that's the other sanctuary which can be placed over here. Very, very useful. And finally, another one of these guys is going to pop up. Okay, no more creature features. Now continuing with the game, right? So there's certain points in time when things are going to pop up. Also, as the cards are being played and as new characters come up, as characters die, telling the story is part of the game. Feeling like you're involved in the movie of Shuffling Horror, the series of Shuffling Horror, where in fact, oh no, how did the Elders of the Abyss get involved with the gunman, or the, the gun mall and the goon and the art student and the scholar? As well as, oh, I want to take a trip to the ghost schooner. I don't know why you want to do that, but if you did want to do that, then yeah, tell the story as to why. And the director is going to help along with that as monsters pop out and certain things occur. When all these guys get put somewhere, whether they be over here or whether they be destroyed and this guy over here is going to be probably equipped to somebody hopefully then that is going to end the reel and when the reel ends this is going to go to somebody as the star character whoever did the best whoever killed the most bodies you guys decide as a group place it on one of those guys there and then flip to the next reel in which case you're going to shuffle this deck up here and then you put down the, the number of cards based on the reel and in this case it'd be 20 so you take 20 cards you place it over here, and then you flip over three more onto the screen and keep going. And the game is going to end after all four of these pop down. All these decks and screens have been removed uh, or, in, or placed in some way that isn't over here. And that would end the game with the bad guy getting, or the director getting one more turn to try and mess with the heroes. The other way, of course, is if all the players end up losing all of their heroes and people start turning into villains, <laughs> actually they can do that, as well as if there's only one player left at the end and they're is going to be some interesting, unique styles of gameplay as to how that will occur an ending to the specific movie and or game that you're playing for the game Shuffling Horror. That's basically the idea of the game. You'll be using speed to a dodge attacks. So like I said before, if I was using my eight muscle to attack this two here, I'd roll. I got under eight. That's good. I could then attack this thing and... So with the director as well, the director would roll. Maybe he has a five and a five, so he'd roll his 10. Ooh, that's not good. Let's say he rolls something else like that. Then he'd roll his d6 to attack the goon. And the goon can then respond by rolling two dice for his speed, if he wanted to, to try and dodge the attack. Or he can simply spend his S points to not take the damage, which could be useful. S points have a different amount of things you can do with them. For instance, you can increase your damage. You can reduce the damage a monster is dealing to you, or you can increase one of your stats. And so, for instance, if I wanted to, I could actually just spend maybe two of these instead of taking two, three damage. Roll these two dice. Hope I get under seven, which wasn't the case. And if I did, I'd survive. If not, the guy goes. So it's kind of a push your luck choice in the game as to whether or not you want to use S points for simply taking damage or use it to increase your speed value to avoid taking any damage at all. All while at the same time, using them as best as possible, resting, keeping your characters alive for the story in the game. Shuffling horror... Let's go ahead and take it up, up and I'll tell you more about it.
So let's go ahead and discuss Shuffling Horror, the series, and the different games. I got a chance to play all of them with a couple different player counts. So it, take, it takes about 75 minutes to play each game, roughly, maybe a little longer, a little less time depending on the number of players. Uh, but in the specific one uh, uh, I've been doing lately for the in In's Mouth 32, this has two really unique and interesting features. It has Mythos, which is going to allow you to banish monsters, and it has Insanity. And there are certain things that give you Insanity. You'll be rolling die to determine what stats you're going to lose out on. Actually, I think it goes down to four whenever it insanity happens on your character and so those are things that kind of affect you negatively as well as the mythos that affects the director and his specific monsters in a negative way what's interesting about this game too i've noticed is i think you could probably just put them all together if you really wanted to you could make your own movie with monsters how you want to put it together with the different uh reels being a little bit random obviously but you can kind of set the scene with all the different titles so you can add them all together one of them the roswell has the map the board which is a must get in my opinion i really like the board i like the fact that you can put your characters next to these specific real little like little like film reel areas and their s points there i keep wanting to call them points for some reason i'm not, not going to do that it's just s points survivor points but that board really brings out a lot of theme in the game and it shows that you guys are at the movies and you're watching the screen and the reel is going off and you're dealing with certain things and the director if he's really good at dming or storytelling can really add some theme to the game if you're just simply playing it without adding the theme of the movie it's fine it's like an art it's like a it's more of like a die rolling uh, semi luck based game that has mitigation involved dealing with monsters and whatnot but really what puts these games up on a pedestal in my opinion is the story element in which people are going to talk about oh this is my character and he saw that thing that you did in this specific location and i saw that and i grabbed my flashlight and i shined it and did this specific thing and i rolled the dice and oh no misery in which case this bad thing happens it has that like rpg aspect where you can be able to roll 12s and snake eyes and if you can pull off certain really cool combos great things will happen and if you pull off really poor combos really negative things can happen you can wipe off full throngs of enemies and also when the enemies get too condensed in one area the director starts getting more spaces for enemies one rule i goofed on a little bit is when you when a director places and attacks what happens is he takes one card from the reel he places that card face down in one of the three screen areas and then he can attack with one of his monsters and then flips it it is it doesn't make a difference so it's just adding more stuff to deal with for the characters and also you as a character want the reels to go quickly but at the same time you're nervous because if one reel goes through so fast because there's so many creature features the director is going to be able to do some serious damage to you and your party in which case you might end up losing the game rather quickly there's a lot of survivors about 12 of them but it's quite easy to get uh pushed into the wrong direction if you know what i mean and the games all have their own unique rule set really but you can kind of put them choose how you want to do it back and forth like, i think one of the rules that we read involved uh discards being just put on the top of the deck but with this specific one here you probably should i think you have to put them on the bottom it doesn't say yet it's not all the rules uh, fit for this one but i just put them on the bottom of the deck because you can draw cards from the top here and that will allow you to gain certain things like perhaps a plot device or a cargo hook well, that's pretty useful right plus two damage and that is going to help you another thing to note too is to defeat a monster you must do the full amount of damage to that specific monster and if you're attacking a full throng of monsters you have to choose which one you want to damage and then that damage is, needs to be enough to fully eliminate that monster whereas the monsters attacking players it's just do that much damage and then you the player will use s points to trigger the speed or they'll just remove the s points as health in which case their characters will could die either way and there's that nice push your luck aspect that's one of my favorite things is the s points and being able to manipulate them to utilize what works best for your character maybe you want to do a lot of damage with him and you don't mind him dying after a period of time because he does so much damage wrecking all the other monsters but at the same time it's going to cost you survivor points which may or may not help you there was a lot of instances in the game where i needed a specific number i used one s point which is brought my number from six to seven which of course seven is what that lucky die number is right and then bam i rolled a seven it was beautiful because otherwise i would have failed miserably and i was able to do decimation to a lot of the characters right i specifically like all these genres uh the, the zombie one probably my least favorite is just far as the, the story and theme goes because i've seen it a lot but the cthulhu stuff always a fan of that and then aliens was really unique really interesting and the storytelling was really great for that one i am a big fan of these games i had a lot of fun with them and i think it's really nice to have a board game that actually can play over eight players and reasonably well too so you're able to just have a bunch of players on the table and they have their specific reactions that go through really quickly and it just progresses a beautiful story that you tell or a really terrible one if you're me and my group overall though shuffle 
crippling horror ends mouth really really dig like the different mythos and the different insanity actions and the new artwork and then roswell was super fun as well like the board inclusion like the different tokens and of course the base game so i believe it's the base game it's the zombies right it's the, it's the pittsburgh 68 in which case you're a zombie survivor horror person right i don't know if you like any of those you're gonna dig this game if you like storytelling games you're gonna like this along with a little bit of rpg and die rolling action take a look down below if you're interested in any of the shuffling horror series as well as on kickstarter which i believe has got in its mouth going on right now down below all right guys thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review if you like this video check out the rest of our videos here on youtube like subscribe and comment hit that little bell notification button it does help it really helps us and we love it when you guys watch our videos and give us all the feedback that you'd like any of you guys that are movie goers that want to make your own movie while playing a game that has a lot of risk in a one versus many are going to enjoy the shuffling horror series go ahead and take a look at our website unfilteredgamer.com tons of blog posts giveaways going on a lot of them as well as our kickstarter list that has a bunch of the new kickstarter games currently up there we update them every week as much as we possibly can and don't forget to check out our friends at everythingboardgames.com the giveaway geek uh i'll put up some more check them out all right guys that's all i got for this time and as always i look forward to delving into the cthulian universe with you next time